Hello, welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. I hope you are all well, staying home and staying safe. I'm concluding the review for the Boenicke W5 speakers. And these are a very interesting speaker system because they are tiny in terms of form factor. They deliver a hell of a lot and they have a lot going for them. If you've come to this video first, this is the conclusion of a whole review series. My advice is start at the beginning, watch through the whole series and come to this video last because it'll all make much more sense if you do. And the first video, the introduction video, I'll link up there for you. In the introduction video, I raised a few questions because there were some technical aspects to the W5's design that was interesting. Some of the Design choices are unique to Bonicki, and I was interested to find out more. One of the things I was interested to find out more about was the rear firing ambient tweeter that's used with the W5. And I think Bonicki use a rear firing ambient tweeter in all of their speaker designs. The technical reasons for using this type of tweeter array I'll discuss with you in a minute, but never once are you aware that you're listening to a speaker that has a forward firing and a rear firing tweeter array. One thing you are very aware of is the excellent treble detail retrieval from the forward firing and rear firing driver combination. Now I was fully expecting the W5s to have quite a rolled off treble given the fact they are using really a small speaker to do their treble as opposed to a dedicated tweeter. But when I measured the speaker's frequency response in my room, I was very surprised to see a very extended and a very linear treble as opposed to a rolled off treble. And you can definitely hear that aspect to the speaker's performance. And I don't know how much of that is down to the forward firing wide bander driver or the rear firing ambient tweeter, but you are very aware of, as I mentioned, very, very detailed and lively energetic treble from these speakers. At times with certain types of music, that treble, that liveliness can be on the limit or the borders of being too much, but it's a pair of speakers, so things like treble amounts depends on a lot of things, speaker placement, system, room acoustics, and more. Back to the technical explanation for why Bonicki have used a rear firing tweeter, I need to thank DL because he wrote a very detailed explanation about the benefits of using a rear ambient tweeter in the comments section to the introduction video to this review. And obviously I'll show you it on the screen so you can see it. And my advice is read his comments if you want to have a full explanation to simplify the benefits of a rear ambient tweeter. It helps to improve the off-axis response of the speaker. So this is on-axis and obviously this is off-axis. So it creates a more wide sound stage or a more wide sweet spot and it means the speaker delivers its sound more evenly across the listening area. Another benefit of a rear firing ambient tweeter is that it's firing direct sound into the listening room in a different way or on a different plane to just a forward firing tweeter. So the speaker is essentially trying to reflect sound to you to create a greater sense of ambience, maybe a greater sense of listening in the recorded space, which is very cool. <laughs> Another question that I had about the Bonicky W5's technical speaker design was the use of an electromechanical eight centimeter parallel spiral resonator. What is it and what does it do? It's a handmade, custom made, heavily gold plated copper wire that's made to an exact length, two microns exact. It's connected to the positive terminal of the wide bander driver and it's there to ensure that that driver delivers the correct harmonic overtones. And this technology is completely exclusive to Bonicky speakers. And maybe that's one of the reasons why these speakers deliver such detail and they can, you know, seem like they mine even more detail from your favorite music. At this point, I just wanna clarify the wide bander on the front of the W5 speakers in combination with the rear firing tweeter, it definitely creates a very detailed, highly energetic, but open and clear overall 
soundstage. The next thing I want to talk about with the Bonicky W5s is their form factor because it's likely to be a major influencer to whether you might buy a pair of them or maybe not. I know it was definitely a major influencer to me to be interested to review the speakers because their form factor being ultra slim in profile and extremely small in footprint makes them an ideal candidate for a high-end speaker solution to go up on a desk as part of my search for the ultimate desktop hi-fi system. And that's taken even further by the fact that Bonicky have designed in a spring system to go underneath them, which isolates them from a desk or furniture or whatever it is you're intended to place them on. And that works, that seemed to really work in terms of isolating the speaker from the physical structure that it's sitting on. But the fact that the Bonicky W5 speakers wobble, <laughs> that really has taken some getting used to from me. It is kind of like a, a quirky design choice or a quirky part of their overall design. But it, yeah, it's definitely something that takes some getting used to. But what doesn't take any getting used to is how lovely the speakers are. I think the speaker design is a very clever combination of modern contemporary and classic with those curved angles and sexy shapes they are stunning beautiful speakers Is the form factor compromising their performance? I think it's a very, very interesting one. Now this is a four pint or a two liter bottle of milk. The internal volume of the W5 speaker is not that much bigger than this bottle of milk, which is really very interesting when you think about how this speaker can deliver bass from such a small enclosure. But what's more important than what the graphs are gonna tell you and what the numbers say is what you actually hear from a bass quality point of view from the W5 speakers because they are very fast, they are very tight, they are very agile, and for the most part, the bass is also punchy and effortless. I like a lot of bass, and I think having the correct amount of bass is very, very important to create an overall balanced sound. I did a whole video and article about this recently, and I can't help but be impressed by the bass quality and the bass quantity that these W5 speakers deliver, again, from such a small speaker. But this will inevitably depend on your music style preferences and choices. I tried and I've played a, you know, a huge variety of different music styles through the W5 speakers, and they delivered equally across pretty much all of it for big bass type dance music. There's probably better ways or choices of speaker than the W5s. And for rock music, I don't really listen to a lot of rock music, but Rage Against the Machine, Killing in the Name Of is on my review playlist. And I think other speakers have delivered that better. I think that really energetic and lively treble pushed the sound of that song off balance. But again, this could be a system setup compatibility thing. To sum up the sound of the Bonicky W5 speakers, you have a very highly resolving, highly detailed, highly energetic top section. Then you have a highly energetic, highly lively and detailed bottom section or bass section, which delivers bass way beyond your expectations from a speaker of this size. <laughs> I think good sound is all about having a correct balance and your correct balance might be slightly different to, to my correct balance. I don't think that really matters. But as I mentioned in the sound demonstration video, I think system matching with the Bonicky W5 speakers is important and definitely something to pay attention to because we want to be maximizing their strengths and obviously playing to their strengths as well. When it comes to sources, I think you always need a very high quality source. I think that's extremely important and definitely important for speakers of this quality. But when it comes to amplifiers, that's where things get a little bit more interesting because I think you want a sweet sounding amplifier to balance with that really lively treble on the W5s. And then you want a rich, 
harmonically rich sounding amplifier to kind of fill in vocals and really bring to life how vocals can sound on these speakers, then you need a gutsy amplifier to really get hold of that bass driver and deliver that fast, tight and agile bass that these speakers can deliver. You might think because the Boniki W5s are a small speaker, you only need a small amplifier, but I think that would be a mistake. Bearing in mind, they are 83 to 86 decibel sensitivity, which means they are on the lower end of the sensitivity scale, but they are four ohm speakers, which means your amplifier is gonna deliver a lot more power than if these speakers were eight ohms. This is something, again, very interesting. To make some amplifier recommendations, the first amplifier that jumps out to me, and I think would be a fantastic partner for these speakers, is the Kanor Audio AI 1.10. Used in triode mode, I think that would be an absolute gem of an amplifier to use with these speakers. Other amplifiers that I can think of, the Nagler Classic Integrated, the Luxman L509X, the Musical Fidelity New Vista 800, and even the Griffin Diablo 300 will all be phenomenal amplifiers to use with these speakers, but these are all very expensive solutions. Coming down to more real world prices and, and products, something like the YBA IA200 would be a great amplifier to use, I feel, and even the Cyrus OneCast. The presentations from these amplifiers, I think, will balance nicely with the W5 speakers and I was even thinking of the new Arkham SA30 integrated amplifier because it will have over 200 watts of Class G amplification, it's got a very high quality DAC on board and it's got the all important Dirac Live so you can manage the sound of the speakers within your room. From all those amplifiers there's different looks, sounds, tastes and qualities, something to suit everybody and certainly something to suit everybody's budget. While we're talking about budgets, you would need a pretty healthy budget to buy a pair of the W5 speakers from Bonicki. The current retail price in the UK is £4,895. So for that budget, you can buy a hell of a lot of different speakers. There is a lot of competition for the W5 speakers and you can very easily buy much bigger speakers that will deliver much bigger bass, play at much higher SPL levels and create much bigger overall sound stages and sound space and scapes. But not everybody wants that. Not everybody wants a really big speaker system. Then we need to think about what are the alternatives at the very small speaker end of things. And that starts with the LS35A and all the different variants of that speaker system, the Falcon Acoustics version, the Harbour version, the Pro AC version, and that extends through all manner of different choices, even through to something like the Kef LS50. And comparing the Kef LS50 to the Bonicky W5 is quite an interesting one because the W5 is about half the physical size of the Kef LS50. To give you some kind of reference to just how small these speakers are, and yet they still really, really deliver. And being small can have its distinct advantages. The Bonicky W5 speakers are extremely transparent sound and they just literally disappear. I don't think once I ever thought I was listening to a speaker system with them, I was just listening to music. And I think that's why I found them so engaging because again, you just listen to the music you're listening to, not the speaker system, which is that means a lot to me. So I think for another summing up of the Bonicky W5 speakers, they are an ultra transparent, highly resolving, highly detailed, highly energetic, highly engaging speaker system to listen to, and that's just being sat up on a desk, which is something you definitely need to bear in mind, and <laughs> very, very interesting. They can deliver a very high-end overall audio listening experience being sat up on a desk. Very, very cool. Before the conclusions to my review of the Bonicky W5 speakers, it's been very interesting and I've really enjoyed my time with them. 
Never has a speaker system been less back-breaking because you can literally pick them up in one hand and yet they still deliver you know, a really engaging high-end musical experience which is way beyond their physical dimensions. For me, I think the Bonicky W5s are a very cool speaker system for so many reasons and it's been a very, very interesting introduction for me to the Bonicky speaker ranges, designs, technologies and their sound. I'm pretty sure as you'll go up the speakers within the Bonicky range to the bigger ones, I'm sure you'll get even more of what I really love about these W5 speakers and then even more on top of that, which is very, very exciting. I'm gonna leave you with this thought. In audio and with speakers, with big speakers and with small speakers, there will be inevitable compromises that have been made with those designs. If you are the type of audiophile who has to compromise on size, i.e. you don't want or can't have, big speakers, but you don't want to sacrifice anything on quality, then the Bonicky W5s need to be on your demonstration list. They are an essential demonstration speaker system. So I hope you've enjoyed my full review series for the Bonicky W5 speakers. And my advice is watch all three parts of the series to create a really in-depth and full context for these really, really interesting speakers. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've found it useful and helpful. Hit the thumbs up button if you did. I'll definitely be seeing you soon. Take care, bye, bye.